All right, so this is the uh, Paul Farrington show. Obviously, we talked about them quite a bit. I'm just using this to kind of kick things off a little bit because it's kind of what kind of triggered it in my mind. Um, the, the main, well, let me just let him do the talking first. And when you take a look over the course of a Packers MVP quarterbacks, all the big ones have done it. Bart Starr did it in 1966. Brett Favre, I actually didn't realize this until the other day I was on his uh, pro football, what was it, the uh, pro football data reference, yeah. Uh, three straight MVPs, 1995, 96, 97, and then of course Aaron Rodgers, four MVPs, 2011, 14, 20, 21. Begs the question, if Jordan Love is going to be the next great Packer quarterback, when can we see this jump into you know, elite, elite, elite status? Now Brian Gutekunst came out and he said the sky's the limit for this guy. Offensive coordinator comes out. He says this night and day from 2023 to 2024. You know, last year we kind of had to keep a leash on everybody. We weren't sure exactly how how much of the plays we could run. You weren't sure you're running new installments, teaching him. And now the scary thing for the NFC North, for us Vikings fans, for the whole league, when you talk about the Packers, is this second year starter has a year under his belt and confidence. And is all right. I never know when to cut those things off, but. Look, the uh, the bottom line is is this. I mean, I, I feel like it's weird as a Packer fan. I'll speak for myself. I, I'm, I'm guessing I'm not alone, but I'll just say for myself. As a Packer fan, having had, I wasn't around for Bart Starr, but Brett Favre and then Aaron Rodgers, who both in their times, for at least a period of time, were considered the best in the entire NFL. Not for their entire careers, but at a period of time. And for most of their careers, if not all their careers, were considered one of the best throughout their entire career. I don't know if we or I was essentially neutered by Pat Mahomes when he came in and it's just like, nobody will ever be better, he's better than Rodgers, he's the best thing we've ever seen. And so it's like, nobody will ever compete with that, obviously he's the best and all that stuff, or what? But why wouldn't we assume that not only is Jordan going to be good, because that's kind of like the question, good, very good, whatever, why don't we believe he can be the best? Why don't we believe, again, speaking for myself, why don't I believe, or why, why does it feel, why do I feel like I'm being a homer if I start talking MVP, if I start talking best in the entire league, better than Mahomes, better than Josh Allen, better than Burrow, better than Lamar, better than whoever it is you like? It shouldn't feel that homerish. It's not like it's never happened before. I mean, look at some of the guys who have been considered MVPs. You're, you're telling me that we can't be competing with guys like Brock Purdy? And it's no disrespect to Brock Purdy, who I thought had a good career, or a, a good season. But if he can do it, why would... I mean, we, we watched an MVP caliber quarterback last year. That's what we watched. So why can't we believe it? Well, I want to lean into it a little bit. Today, we're going to believe... Here is Mina Kimes giving her two cents on Jordan Love in the contract situation and why... You just need to get it done. From Love's perspective, he should obviously try to maximize this for all he's worth. He bet on himself and won. From the Packers' perspective, um, I've seen enough with Jordan Love. Get the deal done and pay what it takes because he's that dude. Uh, second half of the season, he was one of the three best quarterbacks in football. And watching it, it wasn't artificial. It wasn't just schemed up. Although Matt LaFleur is a great play caller. He was making high degree of difficulty throws in clutch situations. I think he has... All of the tools to be one of the five best quarterbacks in the NFL, and I don't think that's hyperbolic, Ryan, based on what I saw last year. No, you asked. Well, and and that's all true. Listen again. I understand there's going to be Bears, Vikings, Lions, and and Forty Niners fans, and everybody else out there going, yeah, 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 bias Packer fan. Whatever. We all watched the guy. As a fan base that watched Aaron Rodgers, I think we have a pretty good gauge of what a really talented quarterback making really good throws looks like. It's why we were able to make fun of the Bears so much with Justin Fields when they put together their highlight reels. It's why we made fun of Tom Brady and his highlight reel, which looked like nothing. <laughs> He's not doing it. He's just throwing to open guys like whoop-de-doo. Like, there's no, there's no madness happening here. 
on top of the fact that, you know, everything she said is true. It's it's This isn't just a scheme thing. This isn't just Matt LaFleur scheming guys open. You're watching a guy do things that you look at and go, that's not normal. There's a difference between being efficient and and taking what's in front of you and just doing a good job, which is really all I asked for from, from Jordan, to what we saw, which is a next-level guy. And this is also coming from somebody, myself, who said... He's either going to be a bust or he's going to be really good. I don't see an in-between. So it shouldn't be that big of a logical leap. This is what Jordan Love is. Now, exactly where it falls on the spectrum, I don't know, but that's the, 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 so who gives a crap? Because nobody is perfectly elite every single year. He's going to have some years that it's like he is the MVP. There's going to be other years where it's like, meh, pretty good. It's, it's, it's Jordan. You know, Jordan's pretty good. Um... But but as she said, he has all the tools. He does. There are some guys that are just not built that way. They're, they're talented pocket passers with strong arms, and they can do certain things. There are only a small select group that can do what Jordan can do. Period. He has really special talent and potential. Here is um, Mike Tannenbaum, I think, right? Real Tannenbaum? Yeah, Mike Tannenbaum uh, talking about Jordan Love. Outside of Patrick Mahomes, if we, the four of us, were running an NFL team today, there is nobody on the planet I'd rather have than Jordan Love, wow. period, and descends. 25 years old, can make all the throws, Six foot four, high character, high processor, can make people miss. The sky is the limit. If he was an IPO, it'd be like buying NVIDIA three years ago. Okay. He is by far to be the player that has the most sustained upside. Do I love Josh Allen? Of course I love Josh Allen. Josh Allen takes a lot of big hits. C.J. Stroud, love C.J. Stroud. Jordan Love's been in the league a little bit longer than C.J. Stroud. There are some other people in that conversation, but when you talk about sustained excellence, to me, it's Jordan Love and then everybody else. Outside of Patrick Mahomes... Well, and, we- and we pretty sure we went over that on, uh, on the YouTubes recently, looking at Jordan Love um, starting in week nine. And not even, starting in week three, but start, if you start in week nine, when it clicked... He was QB1, maybe QB2, maybe, depending on what specific metric, but highest passing grade was Jordan Love. So to act like that's crazy, and by the way, CJ Stroud is down the list. It's not even like it was was neck and neck between Jordan and, and Stroud. It wasn't. It was Jordan and Brock and Dak and Mahomes, and CJ Stroud was not in that group. CJ Stroud had a good year. He was not as good as Jordan Love. He was not as good. Period. And on top of that, go look at the Texans. Two of the high, he had like two top five wide receivers on his team. If you look at PFF grade, I'm not saying Stroud didn't have a good year and that he's not a good quarterback, but the the idea that we're just going to do this big eye roll, like, oh, better than Stroud? I don't think so. I don't think so. Bro, (laughs) Jordan was better. I'm sorry you don't know that. I'm sorry if you don't like the Packers and you don't want to believe that, but that's just the reality. And no, it's not just Matt LaFleur. And guess what? Even if you want to believe that, fine, I'll concede it. You're wrong. Just like you were wrong when you said Matt LaFleur wasn't a good coach, it's really just Aaron Rodgers dragging the team, and now you want to completely flip that on its head because you just refuse to acknowledge anything. You're just making freaking excuses for whatever you want to be true. You're wrong again, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. Fine, it's Matt LaFleur. It's Matt LaFleur doing what? Making Jordan Love the best quarterback in football. So go ahead and have your, your little fake win about he's not actually... The, I don't really care. You're wrong. If you just watch him throw footballs, you can see that. But um, it is what it is. Here is another clip, uh, compliments of our uh, friend Clayton over at Packers Total Access, or Packers underscore Access on the Twitters. It's two and a half minutes long. This is... Um, Wildy and Tausch having a sit-down with Greg Cosell. More tape than anybody, and you do a great job of illustrating what you see. What did you see from the beginning of the Jordan Love era, which was up and down? What yep. were the biggest reasons we saw him really? I, I'm going to give a take here. I think he was one of the best quarterbacks the back half of last season. What he was able to do, the throws that he made, the consistency that he played with. What was the difference last year? I got I got two answers to that because okay. I, I I actually watched a ton of Jordan Love a couple of weeks ago because that's what I kind of do in the off season. I go back and rewatch a lot of things because during the season I can't watch you know let's say 250 
uh, dropbacks in a row, you know, because I'm going week to week. In the offseason, I can do that. But I, I'm going to start by saying I think Jordan Love is one of the three or four most gifted quarterbacks in the league in terms of pure physical talent. But I think there's two things that really showed up to me, and there may be more, you know, coaches who really – you know, that work with him, know him better than I. But just watching the tape, I thought there were two things from a developmental standpoint that stood out. I thought he showed a much better calculated pre-snap understanding, recognizing defenses, understanding how to use his cadence. And I think there was probably no better snapshot of that than the touchdown he threw to Wicks against the Cowboys in the playoff game. I also thought that... Um, uh, there's another great example of that, too, just understanding what he was looking at pre-snap. He threw a touchdown, I think it might have been, was it week 18? Uh, no, maybe week, it was against the Vikings late in the season. Was that week 17 or somewhere around there? Week 17, that would have been, yeah. Yeah, where um, he threw a touchdown to Reed, and the Vikings changed their coverage. They had late coverage rotation, and he read it instantaneously, and he hit Reed on the seam versus what became cover two. Um, but the second point I wanted to make was he just became a better processor and decision maker from the pocket. He saw things more cleanly. He saw things more quickly because um, that's ultimately, you know, what you're trying to do as a quarterback is you're trying to win pre-snap, which is not going to happen all the time. Obviously, there's a defense out there, but you're trying to get as much information as you can pre-snap. So that as you're dropping back, because all that happens really fast, as Mark can attest, you're not thinking it through. It just intuitively happens. And he got much better at that. So look, the the whole point of... The, the only real question that needs to be asked is what we saw in the second half of Jordan Love, uh, of the season last year with Jordan Love, is that real? And what you just heard from Greg Cosell, his assessment is that first half compared to second half, roughly, is Jordan Love when he isn't able to fully process the game pre-post-snap, and then Jordan Love when he is able to process the game pre-post-snap. So what we saw is Jordan Love being Jordan Love, doing Jordan Love things, while also being able to process at a high level. So can he do it? Yes. And what does it look like when Jordan Love is playing with confidence and with the ability to read defenses pre- and post-snap. We saw what it looked like. It looked like from week nine through the end of the season. And what was that? Maybe the best quarterback in football. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that I know that in 2024 he's going to be the number one quarterback or that he's going to win MVP or any of that. Partially because MVP doesn't necessarily correlate to best quarterback, but... Um, the bottom line is he has the talent and there's every reason to believe that we've got a guy who is a top five, top three, top two, not two quarterback and will be for the next 10 to 15 years. And with that will very likely come MVPs and there's a good chance we'll come with hopefully at least a Super Bowl attached to it. I know the assumption is you got a good quarterback, you win Super Bowls. Unfortunately, there's a lot of good quarterbacks in the NFL. And uh, one of the good quarterbacks keeps winning the Super Bowl every year, which means none of the other ones do. So uh, I'm not making any guarantees with that. But um, yeah, I, I listen, I think there's a lot of smart people looking at this who are saying what, and again, I'm, I'm cautiously pessimistic about stuff. I look at it and I go, I don't have really a good argument. I think it makes the most sense that what we saw from Jordan Love's second half is real. And, um, you know, people can argue, well, he wasn't, he wasn't the best quarterback. He wasn't the second best. He wasn't even... Say whatever you freaking want. Just tell me that the second half is real. If we can agree to that, then you can call him whatever you want to call him. You can call him the 10th best quarterback if you want to say stupid nonsense. Go ahead, it doesn't matter. Because it's not going to make a difference when Jordan Love... And the Green Bay Packers go on to decimate everybody, go to the playoffs every single year. If it makes you feel better to call them the 10th best, it doesn't make a difference. Forgot what I was even talking about, but the bottom line is, I think the Packers, there, there is every single reason to believe that Jordan Love is the real deal. And if the rest of the national media doesn't want to recognize that what he was in the second half, which is not a, again, small sample size, three games, four games, five games, no, it wasn't. 
it was like 12 games from week nine on. And again, you can go to week three, and he was still one of the best quarterbacks in football. In fact, he, he go through the entire season, even with, through eight weeks of him not playing very well. He was still one of the best quarterbacks in football. He's the top 10 quarterback. Even including his rough games, including the San Francisco 49ers game where he threw the two picks. But I, I think what we have is... I, 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 I would be shocked if we don't see him consistently in the top three. Consistently in the top three. Um, and consistency is going to be the key because we did see some down, uh, some down swings in there. You know, there were a couple games even after week nine where it kind of was like, what the heck was that? You know, that rough patch where the defense was struggling, but also Jordan was having a rough, I don't know if it was the Giants or Tampa Bay or whatever, he was kind of struggling through that. 49ers game was a dip, obviously. Um, everybody has dips. Pat Mahomes has dips. It's a question of how many and how low do you go. But but the other the other point is with Jordan Love, the highs are really high, and there's a lot of them. You know, some quarterbacks they'll have one or two games that maybe tick into the 90s. He had what four in in a small window. He had four. Uh, th this guy's going to do some damage, some serious damage.